Hi, everyone. This is Mandy Ashley, Director of the Aurora Health Alliance. Our quarterly community meeting, which was held on July 19th, uh, 2023, was our first in-person event since the beginning of the pandemic. There were 70 people, 30 plus organizations. It was a really great event. We highlighted the health departments of Adams, Arapaho, and Douglas counties um, that have been stood up in the past year because of the dissolution of Tri-County Health Department. What follows is a presentation from each of the health departments. Hello, Aurora Health Alliance, and thank you very much for the time to present and talk a bit about the new Arapaho County Public Health Department. We are very excited to share with you today information about the new Public Health Department for Arapaho County and a little bit about our engagement with Aurora Health Alliance and what we're doing in the community and the programs you can expect from us and those that you have known and trust in the past. So just a little bit of history. So Arapahoe County Public Health, we opened up on January 1st of this year. We have four locations. We're organized in five divisions and we have 213 permanent positions. So just a quick introduction. I'm Jennifer Ludwig. I am the public health director for Arapahoe County and have been serving in this role since January and I'm very honored to be serving Arapahoe County as your public health director. And I'd like to introduce Dr. Chris Urbina he is our chief medical officer. So he consults with us on all things medical and you may have the opportunity at some point to meet with him or engage with him. He has been uh, working with counties across the state for many, many years and previously served as executive director of the state health department. So extremely knowledgeable and experienced. And then, of course, we could not do this without our Board of Health. This board was appointed last year by the Arapahoe County Board of Commissioners, and they have been serving since June of 2022. We have Sean Davis, Nancy Jackson, B.B. Kleinman, Nancy Sharp, and Dr. Heather Signorelli. Again, you may know some of these individuals, and we're very uh, pleased and could not do this work without them. They will be serving, uh, their terms are staggered because they were a founding Board of Health, but Board of Health members do are required by law to serve a five-year term, and we will be recruiting most likely at the end of the, or toward the, the fall of this year. So if there is interest of serving on the Board of Health, please do let me know. My contact information is at the end of this presentation. So a little bit about our engagement with Aurora Health Alliance. We have been pleased to um, be engaged and be a part of Aurora Health Alliance for many years uh, when we were Tri-County Health Department and now as Arapahoe County Health Department. Uh, and really in the role of listening and learning from you all and, and your voices. And then also offering our expertise, our experience and that public health perspective. And then serving in a leadership position as co-chair of Aurora Health Alliance board, we have a member who's uh, very active, and then of course contributing financially uh, in the fall that will happen. And then participating in work groups, and then also partnering on project specific activities, things that we have a, a shared concern and interest, mental health, um, the impacts of healthcare coverage resulting from the end of the public health emergency, and then firearm related violence prevention. As I mentioned, we have four locations in Arapahoe County to serve all of our residents. And we have one in Inglewood and it's off of North Broadway and then two in the Aurora area. Uh, one is at Altura Plaza and there we have environmental health, sexual health, immunizations, HIV and syringe access, and then WIC. That is our busiest clinic. It's at Colfax and Chambers. And then in Aurora South, uh, it's really the only presence of Arapahoe County. Um, we have our WIC program and then the nurse liaison program. And then in Greenwood Village, this is our administration building, but this is also where you can come to get a birth or death certificate. And so to really get into the meat of this and to let you all know what you can expect from us, how you can refer 
clients and um, friends and neighbors, or just to know what services are provided and to really assure you that we do have opened and we do have full services, what you should expect from a large public health agency. So in our nursing division and in our clinics, we, have, we offer immunizations, sexual health, our nurse family partnership and nurse liaison program, our home visitation programs, and then HIV harm reduction. So we do a syringe exchange on site, but we also have a team that is out on the streets doing syringe exchange and also testing for HIV and hepatitis C. And then we have our maternal child health program. And then we do the child fatality prevention review team. Uh, all of that fits into our nursing program. It is our largest, or nursing division. It is our largest division. And then in our nutrition division, our women, infant, children, food supplemental program known as WIC uh, is a very large program. And enrollment, we saw an increase in enrollment during COVID and that has not let up. Uh, it is a great program that links to other programs and services. So if you have families or individuals who qualify for WIC, please do refer them to this program. It's a, a great program for nutrition education and a way to link to other services. They also do breastfeeding peer counseling, uh, which has increased um, of recent days. And we uh, are very excited to see a great interest of on, on-site face-to-face peer counseling for that. And then working also in food security. And that takes uh, looks different uh, all the time, but really working with partners to ensure that food is uh, available and accessible for our clients. And then, as I mentioned, in our uh, Greenwood Village office, our administrative office it is where we issue birth and death certificates. They can also be available online um, through a very simple application process. And then many folks may be aware and, and know uh, public health more from the environmental and regulation side. We do have a very large environmental health program, and this is the regulatory branch of public health. They conduct restaurant and food service licensing and inspections. They do food safety trainings. They also inspect child care centers, uh, swimming pools and spas. As you can imagine, they're very busy right now with the summer months and, and pools in full swing. Also uh, bodies of water, like lakes and uh, where there are swim areas and then body art. Uh, so that is also a, a big part of what we do. And then they also look at septic systems excuse me, septic system permits and inspections. And then we have a solid and hazardous waste inspection program and offer education. Uh, so environmental health is another large program and it is the regulatory branch, but also very centered on partnership building and education. And communicable disease prevention and control. This is the team that responds to any type of an outbreak, whether that be from um, a, mosquito or a, a flea or from a foodborne illness. Uh, so they look at infectious disease, anything that is reportable to public health. And there are a lot of reportable diseases to public health. This team has been very, very busy uh, and it's been a very active summer. They also track uh, community health data and help us communicate that out. And then emergency preparedness and response. This team is the response infrastructure that helps during public health emergencies. And as we all recall the last few years of the COVID-19 response, we did, we did have a separate program for COVID-19 response, but we brought communicable disease together with emergency preparedness and had our COVID-19 response that is still ongoing just not as large as it was, thankfully. And that team also coordinates with hospitals and schools and other emergency response officials to help prepare and respond in the event that there were an emergency. And another big focus for Arapahoe County Public Health as we really start out as a new agency and get to know our community in a more meaningful, responsive way. Uh, we created an entire division around partnerships and planning. And we really focused on being out in the community, 
to share what we do, but also to really get to know the community and find out what's happening and what do we need to be concerned and care about. So we're, com we're assessing community health needs. We are in the process of a lot of strategic planning and really looking at to advance our health equity and community engagement efforts. Uh, this team is also responsible for our performance and per be developing our performance management and our continuous quality improvement. We have a great opportunity as a new department to really think about how we do our work and how we can improve the experience for our customers and consumers. And then at some day, we, our goal is to become an accredited health department. And then in community health promotion, these are areas in which we are really engaging with the community to find out the most critical needs of communities so that we can build out our community health promotion programming. Right now, our focus is on healthy aging, tobacco prevention and control and education, and healthy beverage promotion, as well as overdose prevention. And then areas of future growth where we believe uh, we will be hearing more from and, and areas of concern for public health include the promotion of good mental health and well-being, increase in ensuring people have access to affordable, healthy food, and then considering injury and violence prevention, and then probably much, much more based on community input. And this is a call to you all watching this today to please click in this QR code and take just a few minutes to inform our community health improvement plan. Public health agencies are required to conduct a community health assessment and a community health improvement plan every five years. As a new health agency, we are building off of the great things from Tri-County Health Department and doing a refresh of our community health assessment. And we really want to hear what does the community care about? What makes a healthy community? What are the things that we as your new health department need to be focusing on? And our um, staff along with our board of health will be considering the priorities and creating a community health improvement plan to adopt next year. And this truly is work that we do with the community. This isn't the, the health department's plan. This is our plan and what we need to do and what we care about to improve the health for everyone in our community. Our general uh, main line is 303-795-HEALTH-4584. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook and Nextdoor. Our website uh, has, is getting a revamp. It's been built to uh, meet the needs and, and hopefully is more accessible. And then we also have an event event request form. If you have an event in which you would like us to be a part of, or you have something, please uh, use this form to let us know about your event uh, so that we can help uh, spread our word. And then on select topics, um, if you, you probably are well in, in contact with Laura Dawn, our regional health connector, but here's also uh, contact information for our, our biggest areas where we have uh, engagement, vaccine outreach, um, or to find out when um, immunization clinics might be held, communicable disease, if you have any questions about any kind of uh, communicable disease, COVID, we will continue our COVID programming, environmental health, emergency preparedness, our tobacco program, and then our community engagement and event participation and our health equity coordinator is Grace Sulin at the, and her contact is at the bottom. So thank you very much. I appreciate your time and wish you all well. So, hi, my name is Ashley Scollard. I am one of the community health educators with the Douglas County Health Department. And we are here today to tell you an overview about our brand new Douglas County Health Department. Um, with our Douglas County Health Department, um, and this is our organizational chart. We have our Douglas County Board of Commissioners, uh, the County Commissioners, the Douglas County Board of Health. They oversee they oversee our Executive uh, Director, Douglas County Health Department, and then we are broken up into four divisions. We have the Health Administration, Emergency Preparedness Response and Epidemiology, Environmental Health, and Community Health. Uh, currently, we are at forty one employees full time. Um, Eleven of those are environmental health. Our epidemiologists, we have four. We have six public health clerks, two emergency preparedness and response team members. Our health department administrators are six of them. 
community health team has seven, and then our WIC program has five. Our health department kicked off back in June of 2022 with our vital records. Our vital records department will help you get a birth certificate, uh, death certificates. There's no appointment needed. It is a wonderful process where someone can just walk into the building and they can receive a certificate in about 15 minutes. Um, the way they work is you'll pay for the first copy. Any additional copies are a little less money. So $20 for the first, $13 for additional. Uh, the documentation that's required for that is going to be your current driver's license. Other forms are accepted. Some will fill out an application. Uh, they process the application and take a copy of the driver's license. And within 15 minutes, they walk out with a certificate. Our epidemiologists do what uh, such folks do well, which is monitor disease. Uh, so they do sur disease surveillance, and uh, which, of course, is intended to, uh, as we know, to control the spread of communicable disease. I don't suppose for this crowd, I need to explain too much more about that part of what they do, but our epidemiologists also help other members of the team with data analysis questions, and in uh, one of our epidemiologists also is our, our web, de web page designer, and so uh, they're kind of a multi-talented uh, group of folks. So the Emergency Preparedness and Response Partnership, we have two planners and then there's a, a director of um, the EPRP uh, who's also uh, oversees the epidemiologists. And so we've been working on building uh, the incident command system uh, amongst our uh, departments and uh, we're actively involved in that now. Uh, the, Details of what they do, of course, most of you are already familiar with that. So environmental health, again, uh, most folks uh, watching this video know what they do. Uh, we have a team that is located at our um, uh, Park Meadows Center up in Lone Tree and then uh, other uh, team, uh, the other part of the team is here with us in Castle Rock. They uh, do um, a lot of uh, restaurant uh, in, um, inspections, which is a heavy burden for them at the moment. We're trying to keep up with uh, current inspections and then uh, also complete a backlog of inspections that uh, we inherited back in 22. So yeah, wastewater, they do that. So community health, that's uh, what Ashley and Jean and uh, I and Alyssa, who's not on screen, uh, are involved with. Uh, we're Currently, three community health educators, and then Jean is our maternal child health specialist. We're also in the process of hiring two more community health educators, one of whom will be a tobacco specialist working with Elbert County, uh, since we support Elbert County, and then another community health educator who will be uh, focused on immunizations. Ashley, Alyssa, and myself. Uh, are, focus, are, are not so focused, we kind of are generalists. Uh, and a little bit about our backgrounds, uh, Ashley is from um, uh, the teaching world, a, a health educator uh, who taught in Chicago public schools for quite a while. Um, Alyssa is a master's in public health uh, trained person who just recently joined our team. And then I'm a uh, retired pharmacologist and emergency physician, so I, uh, have kind of a broad scope of things that I get involved with. In terms of what we do, in terms of the focus that we have in community health, this little graphic uh, really focuses our attention. So chronic disease management, falls prevention, substance use, use and drug overdose, suicide prevention, STI prevention and tobacco education prevention and cessation. Those are the focuses of the community health effort. And uh, we have uh, been working on all of those since we got started on January 1st. We do have a nurse support system. We have a registered nurse who works with uh, the uh, human services division of uh, Douglas County. And she uh, works with families in crisis. Currently, she's our only uh, registered nurse in the department. So in terms of clinical services, we contracted most of those out to the Stride Community Health Center. They, for us, do immunizations, reproductive health, SDI testing, uh, so on. And uh, they are a, a partner that is located in Parker. We're a little bit concerned about the 
needs on other places of the county. So we're working to expand the availability of services. That's a work in progress. Great. Thanks, Danny. Um, and uh, my name is Jean Newell. I'm the maternal child health coordinator, as Danny had mentioned, under um, the community health team. And so I lead all of our maternal and child health efforts here at Douglas County. Um, really right now, what we are focused on um, in my world is uh, just uh, the assessment of um, our county and the, and the specific needs that we have. Um, as well as the development of uh, community partnerships. Um, and another you know, special project we've been working on is enhancing literacy with families. Um, and so we have uh, different books available for them, um, been participating in lots of outreach efforts, but um, essentially the, the services and populations that um, we serve in maternal child health are infants, children, and youth, um, children and youth with special health care needs, um, women of reproductive age, and um, we have some different uh, priorities, priority areas that uh, the state of Colorado has identified. And specifically in Douglas County, it's for um, increasing social and emotional well being. However, we're also exploring um, access to um, supports. So that's um, coming with the development of our additional programs. So I'll also talk about um, if we can move along to our WIC program. So you all may be familiar with the WIC program. It's very uh, well known um, with families. And so um, the WIC program offers some special uh, nutritional um, support for families. And that's for women who are either uh, pregnant, um, one year post, uh, postnatal and or children that are newborn to about four. Um, and so they provide different benefits for getting, um, for meeting their nutritional needs. By the way, along those lines, we have five WIC uh, specialists who are yes. on, the, on the team. Two of them being uh, registered dietitians, and then the WIC team can also support families in a a lot of various other ways with their needs. Um, so if you do have any questions about the Douglas County Health Department, you can visit us on our website. Um, you can give us a call at 720-643-2400. Um, and then we also on the website have our emails to the specific departments. Um, but for community health, if you have any specific questions um, from that, it's ch, so like community health at douglas.co.us. Hi, my name is Monica Bielek, and I am with Adams County Health Department. It's a pleasure to talk to all of you at the Aurora Health Alliance. The partnership with the Aurora Health Alliance is invaluable so that we can make sure that the Aurora community knows of the services that each of the local public health departments provide. Um, Adams County Health Department began officially on January 1st, 2023, and we have these as our client facing locations. Each of them is available um, to the public to provide specific services, which I'll talk about in a moment. But please note that these are none of these are new locations. They are all the locations that were previously available through Tri-County Health Department. The last location is our administrative offices, um, which are located in the Adams County Government Center. All of these two are available to anybody. As I talk about the services today, Please note that no matter where a person lives, there is no wrong door and that um, we are happy to serve everybody and guide people to the right services as, as beneficial. Adams County Health Department's vision. We want healthier and more equitable community within Adams County. We want to reduce the inequities of health outcomes by engaging our communities. And we know we can only do this best when we engage with community, design with community, and combine our public health science with the community knowledge. We are doing that through strengthening relationships and building trust which, with each and every one of you. With curiosity, we will do this. And it's important to emphasize our commitment to curiosity. We have a learning orientation and we will continuously explore what the role of our health department should be within our communities. We know this shifts over time and we will shift as we learn. And we're committed to innovation and inclus inclusivity so that we continue to address new health challenges 
that our communities face. We are committed to all of you to stay relevant and make sure that we are addressing those, those community health priorities that are important to you. This is an overview of our programs and services. There's a lot here. I'm gonna go through them in a little more detail in the slides coming up. I think the most important thing to know here is that we are providing the same services as you have always known and that you've always valued. Um, and we are doing it with community to make sure that they're meeting the needs within Adams County overall. Here's a summary of some of those services by departments that we have available through our divisions within the health department. First, public health nursing offers immunizations, both in our clinics and in the community, sexual health and sexually transmitted disease prevention and treatment. Similarly, we have clinically based and community based services. We support family planning. We um, believe in harm reduction so that we are supporting people um, to advance along the progression from substance use to healing. And we provide syringe access so that communities have alternatives that are safe to support their, their journey towards um, healing. The Nurse Family Partnership and Nurse Support Program provide nursing services within the homes of people in our communities. And we also provide services to children and youth with special health care needs to make sure that um, when there are a lot of com complexities for children um, with special health care needs, that our nurse coordinator can help to families to navigate the resources and track those resources that are necessary over time so we can make sure that they're meeting the needs. Our Nutrition and Family Health Division um, provides supplemental nutrition education for um, families who are in the Women, Infants, and Children program. This program is demonstrated to be highly effective to make sure that families have the healthy foods that they need and are meeting their children's nutritional needs from ages zero to five. They provide breastfeeding support, diabetes education and prevention available in the community, and um, help with um, healthy eating and active living. We want to make sure that the healthy choice is the easy choice. Um, and with that, we help families enroll both in WIC and the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program so that it's easy for families to get the food, the supplemental income they need to feed their families healthy foods. Our Environmental Health Division provides retail food inspections to keep our restaurants healthy, um, body and art and facility inspections to make sure that people are receiving body art in a safe manner. Um, we keep our schools and child care facilities healthy by making sure that we're supporting them to be safe and healthy. Water quality and on-site wastewater inspections, keep our water clean, solid and hazardous waste inspections, and industrial hygiene. Our environmental health division does a great job of both regulating um, those places where community goes and not educating. They work with all of the owners of these facilities and people providing these services to make sure that they are just being safe by working with them and educating them. We also have the Division of Health Equity and Strategic Initiatives. This division is designed to respond to the community's needs and focus on making sure the healthy choice is the easy choice out in the communities. Um, this division also assesses the health priorities of our communities and then responds when we learn that there is a health priority in the community. Some of the things on which we focus include mental health promotion, and that is also includes substance use prevention. Um, we are focused on community engagement and listening to the community. Um, we advance public health policy in all areas of public health. We recognize that policy is the way to sustain positive public health interventions. We have a health enrollment team to get out in the community and in our facilities to make sure that it's easy to access the care options available to people. Our maternal child and family health services um, focus on those things that are focused on prevention for our MCH population. We focus on tobacco, opioid substance use prevention, and community health promotion. 
We wanna make sure that our communities are healthy and easy to be healthy. Our epidemiology and data science division is a strong resource in the community so that you can access data to inform the work that you do. On our website, you can request the services from our epidemiology and data science team so that you can learn about the community's health and, and get the data that you need for grants and the data you need to inform your programming. They also have interactive maps to understand the Adams County health data. And our vitals records program issues birth and death certificates for everyone in our communities. I emphasized this before, but it's super important to say there is no wrong door for our communities. Aurora residents can talk to people in public health and make sure that they're accessing the right services. If a community member enters the wrong door, we it is on us to make sure that you get to the right services available. But we are committed to supporting our community to get the services that they need. Some services for businesses will need to be accessed based on the business address, such as the health inspections and septic systems. Again, we can help you get there. Reach out and we can help you get there. And we are working together when it comes to the community of Aurora um, to make sure that as we understand the health needs of the community, we aren't asking you twice. We're working together to ask you once, listen once, and work together to support the health needs of the community. We're intentionally building the relationships and collaborative work. We've been working with, we've met with our municipal governments and school districts. We're meeting with community organizations and health systems and our residents. Um, we're engaging in community um, through our community health implementation plan that I've mentioned. We're gonna listen to you all and understand what the priorities are and develop a collaborative strategy to make sure that all of us are working together leveraging our strengths to make sure that Adams County is a healthy community. The, the Adams County Health Alliance is convening partners so that they can connect and understand the services available and leveraging those services to make sure that there's a seamless healthcare system and social health system for our community members. And we also have on our website a request for community engagement. So if you go to our website and you have an event that you want us to join, we are happy to join you. And please click there and we will have the teams that you want at your events. You know your community well and we welcome the opportunity to join you. And that's it. Thank you so very much. We are grateful for the partnerships and we are always here to listen and to support the work that you're doing in the communities.